We're gonna go ahead and get started as usual with a video. If you wanna watch the video, I know if you're on live and you wanna watch the video, you can actually check out the, the final recording of this, which will be it'll on be, YouTube. It'll be on the screen. Yeah, you'll be able to see it. I know on live it's kind of awkward, but it is not <laughs> awkward on YouTube. Yeah, you'll actually be able to, to watch it. <laughs> yes. All right, so we start with a couple little old ladies talking about what life was like without air conditioning. You got it? Yep. Ready. Okay. There we go. I don't want no noises. <laughs> but what did people do to keep cool before air conditioning? Betty Lou Joannis explains. Well, I think we tried to dress as cool. Uh, most of us wore sundresses during the summer. And we tried to calculate what our activities were. Our mothers did not cook really hot meals in the evening particularly. You were very aware of actually everything you did. Lynn Powell, a former teacher from Miami, remembers very hot days in the old schoolhouse. Well, I'm from Miami. And about the same, but I remember that I taught in schools that were unair-conditioned. So the children were hot, I was hot. You tried to get them as close to the windows as you could, and you also had huge industrial fans yes. that would blow right on them. Well, that sounds awful. Yeah, that sounds horrible, <laughs> Jesus. We should be thankful right now that we don't have to deal with any of that, but I know, that's I, crazy. I used to work on the George Ranch and we had to be in period costumes, no AC in the summer. That sounds like uh, it was miserable. torture. <laughs> it was miserable. So, like, there were four houses, and, and one of the houses did, or two of the houses did have AC, but two of them didn't. And one of them, like, the prairie house, like, their first dog-run cabin, was just mostly outside. So you were outside all day. Oh, no. Yeah. But since it's a dog-run cabin, it had a very rudimentary system where the house had, like, a wind tunnel. Oh, so okay. if you sat in the wind tunnel, it wasn't that bad, but... We'll talk more about yeah rudimentary AC systems, but it was pretty bad, like hoop skirts and multiple layers. Oh no, yeah, that sounds very uh, traumatic. <laughs> no, and people used to wear wool, like in the 19th century. Linen doesn't come around till later. Yeah, so you know, like Civil War period, people are full on wearing wool outside in the summer. I don't like that. I know, not a fan. I get hot yeah. like wearing shorts, you know. So. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm, um, but then the problem is, especially in Texas, they blast the AC so cool that you're just never comfortable all summer. That's so true. Like, I'm wearing a hoodie right now. Okay. Yeah. It's really hot outside, it's, but when I go inside, it's cold. Like, especially, like, I like to keep my apartment kind of cold. And so I always have a jacket. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's literally 100 degrees outside. No, yeah. So, uh, but you know what? I am grateful for AC, even though it gives me headaches when it's too cold. I yeah. Am, I am grateful because it could be a lot worse. Our houses could be melting. Too. We could be melting. We could be melting, could be yeah. Melting. So, uh, hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Isis. And we're the home girls. And today we're talking about HVAC systems, obviously. This is something we cannot live without, especially here in Houston, Texas. Yes. And let me tell you, as they say, it's not the heat, it's the humidity that'll get you. The combination of both yes. <laughs> is just horrible. This but. morning it was 70 degrees, nice weather, but 80% humidity. That's so a it lot. was like. You go outside and it just feels like sticky soup. Like, and it's been raining too, like the past two days. So sticky soup. And um, I'm also not a fan. Not a fan. Yeah, me either. Where I grew up, we do have humidity in Virginia, but it's really, I mean, it can get humid, but not. Not like this. No. Not like this. I thought I could handle it, and I was wrong. I was wrong. So it is. It's really a pain. Yeah, we have had the AC on since April first. At least me and Chris have. I don't know about you. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I always have the. <laughs> I always have the <laughs> AC on. Um, and it's going to be on probably till November. I mean, last year it was hot into November. Yeah. So we're definitely have AC on for a long time. Uh, now the big thing to know. 
we keep talking about AC, but the AC is actually only like the last part of the word HVAC yeah. or the acronym yes. HVAC. It's just a little part of it. That's right. They uh, they also have to do with heating and ductwork. So the H is heating, the V is the ductwork or the ventilation, and the AC is obviously AC. Air conditioning. Well, today's AC system is a relatively modern invention. The act of cooling a home or residential structure or heating a home or residential structure has been around since human beings have lived in dwellings. We've always searched for a way to make our living space more comfy. comfortable. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's start with the history. The big thing to remember is HVAC stands for heating, cooling, and ventilation. So the history is going to jump around a bit, kind of like talking about all four, yeah, three of these topics. I'm sure they didn't all come together yes, for a in, while. In, <laughs> in the modern HVAC system. Yeah. Uh, we actually talked a little bit about the heating element in the fireplace episode. Oh, yeah. It was earlier this season, right? Or was that last season? I think it might have been last. We have. I we don't are so far now. Like, Do we have, there's so many episodes now. Like, I just can't, like. So there is I an episode. Check. There's I'm an episode look. on fireplaces. So please reference that um, because they, we do talk about. Yes. Heating. We do talk about heating. Yeah. Um, well, it was a season. Yeah. Yes. It was uh, the second episode, I think. Okay. So yeah, just a just a couple months ago. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, check that out. There's some more stuff about heating on there, and I'm, we might talk about some of the stuff related to that. But we'll see. We'll see. So the oldest form of HVAC is called the Korean, and I'm gonna probably say this wrong, Ondol method. O n d o l method. Interesting. Yes. It dates back to the Iron Age. It involves an outside furnace, underfloor pipes, and stone that would retain heat for long periods of time and then release it slowly. So it was like radiant floor heating. So you'd heat your floors to heat your house. Oh. Korea can get pretty chilly. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm sure it can. And actually, they still use it in South Korea. Like, people oh. actually still use that as a form of heating their houses in I've South never Korea. heard of anything like that, so I know that's very interesting. We don't know what they do in North Korea. We can assume they have no HVAC systems in North Korea. Yeah. Except for the Supreme Leader. But um, <laughs> in, we won't get into that. <laughs> we won't get into that. In South Korea, they actually, some houses are still using these this oldest form of heating. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it yeah, is pretty wow. cool. The ancient Romans, here they are. You knew they were coming. Yes, of course. They um, always do. <laughs> <laughs> they always show up. They use something called a hypocost, or uh, it, what they actually would have called a hypocostium, which is an open area under floors that's heated by gas and smoke from fires before. Before, So kind of the same idea as the Korean method, but the Korean method's using more steam, mm -hmm. whereas the Romans are using uh, actual fires. Oh. Um, the same idea. You'd heat the floor to heat the room. Um, and they used them in their houses and in the Roman baths. So oh, there was okay. actually a hypocostium in the Roman baths. Most people, if you know anything about Roman baths, would recognize the word. But it was actually that floor heating method was used to heat the, um, the houses as well. Interesting. Yeah. And it can get pretty chilly in northern Italy. Is there really? Any, How cold does it like get? Uh, Italy has Alps. They have skiing oh. and stuff. Yeah. Oh, so it can cool. get pretty cold. pretty cold yeah and i am and i think rome can get chilly too rome is kind of like houston it has a lot of like hot months but it has yeah. like a couple like kind of chilly months, yeah. month um so yes but yeah um most uh common places they were using them though were france and england because those are much more chillier yeah. climates in germany of course um so in china we have, so we talked about heating systems. Now let's talk about the earliest cooling system, mm -hmm. um, which began in 206 BCE in China. Um, and this is the earliest cooling system. Wow, like. that's a long time ago. I know. This is during the Han Dynasty. And a windmill fan was first created for the military and was later used to thresh grain, which is funny. So, like, they kind of had this fan that would cool their soldiers. And then they also realized it was helpful in agriculture too. Wow. Yeah. Get all the use out of it. <laughs> yeah. So it really was only a luxury they used for their military. Uh, in the Trang dynasty, it was actually then incorporated to daily life. Mm. And so the question is, how do you run this fan? So you could have horses or humans. In the Trang dynasty, they actually started using water wheels to move oh, the fan. Oh, they're smart. To cool the houses. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, there was also something called a self-reigning pavilion and only obviously worked for homes that were had water access, preferably river access because the water was mm-hmm. moving. And it combined a windmill and a water wheel to pump water onto the roof of the building when then it would drip down in like rain curtains, kind of like misting at a theme park, you know, and they have those yeah, like Yeah, those are things like you used to like cool down because yes. it's so hot. Yes. Um, that's kind of that idea. You have like a misting system. Oh, that's pretty cool. Inside? That's yeah, cool. which that's is very, not That sounds inconvenient, but I'm sure but it worked it for the time yeah, that it was. Yeah, you do, you, yeah, you know. You have, You'll always you know, find you know. a way. You'll always find a way. Yeah, exactly. So now we're going to jump up actually quite a few hundreds of thousands of years to the renaissance and in the renaissance uh remember at some point the roman empire fell and they just kind of forgot yeah everything, everything got the, erased yeah, yeah pretty much we're all angry about it but so in the renaissance they're like what if we run warm water through pipes to heat our houses which is pretty much what the romans were doing in the floor yeah but the renaissance they're actually like what if we tried to put it through the whole building Mm -hmm. So there was some hit or miss with this, and it isn't until the Victorian era in the 19th century that it it becomes the primary way to to heat houses. We know it as a radiator. Oh, Mm -hmm. wow. And I had radiators actually in Washington, D.C. when I lived in D.C., and they're mean. They're mean little... Oh, Oscars. really? Yeah, they, like, spit and hiss at you. Ooh. And then if they're really angry, they'll, like, clank all night. So you'll they, be trying... noisy. Yes, oh. you'll, you'll be trying to sleep, and it'll, like, dunk, 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 dunk. Like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> and, and then it was, like, like you walk past it, and it'll, like, spit hot water on you. They're really nasty. Oh, my God. Where Where is that, like, kept at? Like, the radiator in, like, the basement, or...? Um, you know what? That's a good question. I know it's, like, steam... So I think it is a basement thing. I actually don't know how, what power, I mean, I know I understand what powers radiator, but I don't know where the, like, the yeah. central one is. But yeah, it was invented, the, the idea of the modern radiator, although the Romans kind of came up with a general idea, yeah. the modern one is the Renaissance and then the Victorian era. So they've been around for a long time, yeah. being tortured by these things for a long time. <laughs> Um, but the Renaissance wasn't the only, they didn't just have radiators in the 1600s was actually kind of the end of the Renaissance, more to the age of an enlightenment. A Frenchman named Louis Savat invented the circulating fireplace, and this allowed cold room air to enter at the bottom of the fireplace, be warmed, and then entered through a separate opening above a mantle. In England, a duct from the outside was added to provide air combustion. So now we have very room, uh, rudimentary ventilation system, right? This is yeah. using firework going in duct work to kind of move hot air. Yeah, get the air out of the yeah out of the house. You get rid of the cold air, and it gets sucked through the fireplace and comes out as hot air. Ooh. Very basic duct work idea. Yeah. So. Um, Let's jump a little bit forward now. So we were at 1600. Now we're at 1758. In the United States, our boy Benjamin Franklin oh. be inventing. We know Franklin, Franklin was quite an inventor and quite a ladies' man. Oh, uh, of course. You should Wikipedia Ben Franklin. Do you know a lot about him? Not really. My hot take on him is he's kind of gross, but <laughs> he had a lot of girlfriends. And of course. When he was in France, this is obviously way oh, after 1758. Oh, I know about, like, you know, like, Hamilton, like, a little bit. About a little ben bit, a little bit. Because well, I, I know he was in France, and they're like, oh, you're finally back. But <laughs> Yeah, they. well, he wanted to give off the idea that we were, like, pioneers. Yeah. So he, like, wouldn't bathe and wouldn't wear, like, and he would wear, like, a coonskin cap, and the French thought he was, like, some sort of backwoodsman. Oh, but my God. No, he was just some, like, He was just kid. trying to be flashy. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yes. Uh, but... Before that, before he stopped bathing yeah. in France, in 1758, Ben Franklin found that evaporation of alcohol can cool something down enough to freeze water. So he was kind of testing to see if he could make a colder, like, a cold evaporation. Yeah. That's so interesting. Like, why would he think to do that? Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, yeah. it can get really hot and gross in Philly. So it's like, you just got to find some type of way. Yeah. People were desperate. Yeah. And actually, Philly was kind of the hotbed. There's a lot of um, plagues or like pandemics that yeah. go around. In Philly. Epidemics, I guess, would be the word. Yeah. Epidemics that go around Philly. And it was a lot of it was thought because of the hot, dirty air. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So um, he, I can understand his his want to find yeah. 
a um, way to get cool. <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately, this didn't really take off. So that's why we don't oh, have yeah. alcohol run HVAC systems anymore. That sounds like it would be expensive. <laughs> Uh, but around the same time, Michael Faraday found the same results using compressed and liquefied ammonia, which we actually use compressed and liquefied freon mm. in our modern AC system. Um, so we're getting closer. Yeah, it, like, to the it idea. sounds like it's slowly uh, getting there, slowly evolving. Uh, but for the rest of us peons who weren't Ben Franklin or Michael Faraday, what did you do? Yeah. So if you didn't live in a palace that had you know some kind of circulating air or yeah. whatever um most everyday people were building homes with the goal of having them cool so for example in the united states the dog ring cabin that i was talking about earlier was very mm. popular and this is a cabin i'll explain a little bit better now you have um it's basically a house with a giant hole in the middle so you'd have like a square hole two or three rooms on this side, two or three rooms of this uh, on this side, and then a roof covering the whole thing. Yeah. So the hole would run through the front and back of the house, right? It was just an open area, but it was covered by the roof. Yeah. Um, and some of the times the lofts would have extra bedrooms in them, especially if you had a lot of kids. Yeah. Um, and so your two rooms or two or three rooms on one side, two or three rooms on the other, every room would be accessible. And then typically your kitchen would be separate, like we heard in that um, video where she said her mom wouldn't cook hot food. Yeah. Um, obviously, people were afraid of fires, but another way of keeping your house cool was having the kitchen completely separate so all the heat... Would stay in one spot. spot. Yeah. yeah. So it was a double whammy, protected you from fires, and in the summer, protected you from uh, the heat. Um, other places people would build their homes would be like on the ocean or on a lake or a river where they could get like a breeze... So, for example, George Washington's Mount Vernon is built on the banks of the Potomac River. Yeah. And um, they have a beautiful loggia porch out back where you get a great breeze coming up. It's also on the top of a hill. So you get this Ooh. like wind tunnel effect. That's pretty cool. And something the people in plantations would do would have, again, same idea as the dog run, a big door in the front of the house and a big door in the back. And then in the summer, you would open both doors and, and then allow it would just the bring air. Out of air. Yeah. Um, so people had ways of coping, you yeah. know. They, had they were ways creative of, with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you did wear lighter fabrics, but again, everybody's wearing multiple layers, and women are always wearing some sort of yeah. support garment. I like, mean, we used to wear a lot. <laughs> yeah, you wear a lot. Um, so, yeah. But now we're moving up. So we stopped at 1758. Now we're in the 1840s. Okay. So as I said, um, Every summer, it would get really hot, and people would die, probably because they were wearing, like, 20 layers of clothing. They would also die of weird, horrible diseases that would only come out in the summer. Yeah. And so by the 1840s, they're like, all right, we think we need to cool people down. And if we cool people down, they're not going to die. Yeah. Um, so what did they say? Were they like, let's have women wear 90% less clothing? Nope. Of that course definitely not. did not of happen. Of course not. That doesn't happen for, like, another 100 years. <laughs> um Dr. John Gorey of Florida proposed the idea of cooling cities to re relieve the, the residents of the evils of high temperatures. Yep. So the evils. Yes. <laughs> um, and so he came up with a rudimentary system for cooling his hospital. But this required ice to be shipped to Florida from the Great Lakes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Ice. And that, so that was kind of expensive. Yeah. It sounds so, very expensive. He kind of abandons that idea. Yeah. So he starts with the the ice idea, and it's like, wow, it's working, but this is really expensive. Yeah. People aren't going to do this. It's so, not worth it, yeah. Yeah. So he begins experimenting with the idea of artificial coolant, and he designed a machine that creates ice using a compressor powered by a horse, water, wind-driven sails, or steam, and was gra granted a patent for it in 1851. So unfortunately... um. People were still like, this is really expensive, and I don't want a horse yeah, and a windmill. Yeah, I was going to say, everybody need a horse. Yeah, like, everyone that needs a like horse a and a windmill, <laughs> and you still need a you know, like ice generating yeah. the compressor. Um, so pretty much his invention was there. That's the first yeah. type of AC system, actual AC system. Mm -hmm. uh, but it just doesn't take off. It needs some more tweaking. Yeah. <laughs> Again, we have about another 100 years before it actually takes off. Jesus. That's so, crazy. Yeah, I know. Um 
And I'm, by I mean take off, I mean in everybody's house. Yeah, so, like everybody had it accessible yeah. to them. And really, I mean, a lot of houses in D.C. didn't weren't fully air conditioned until 1986. I mean, I'm sure it took a long time like to fully it, transition. It, exactly. Um, in the 40s, it was government buildings in D.C. That's when they kind of transitioned the government to A.C. systems. But uh, I know Tudor Place, which is a museum I worked at, never had AC, still doesn't have AC. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. When you work there in the summer, it gets uncomfortable. <gasps> they they bring in these, like, um, artificial – they're not window units. They're, like, units that they set up and put in the room. Yeah. But it does get very really hot. hot. Yeah, Jesus. very hot and uncomfortable. That's crazy. Okay. So because the horse and windmill thing wasn't great – uh, we have an engineer named Willis Carrier, and this is at the turn of the century, so the 1900s. And he took a job that would result in the invention of the first modern electrical air conditioning. Yay. And while working for the Buffalo Forge Company in 1902, he was tasked with solving a humidity problem that was causing the magazine pages to wrinkle at the Sackett Wilhelm Lithography and Publishing Company in Brooklyn. So he wasn't even really hired to create AC. AC. He was hired to stop, again, the evils of high temperature. The evils. The evils of high temperature. <laughs> so he designed a system that controlled humidity using cooling coils and secured a patent for his apparatus for treating air, which could either humidify by heating water or dehumidify by cooling the water in the air. And he continued testing and refining his technology. He also got a patent in automatic uh, he also patented an automatic controlling system for regulating the humidity and temperature of air in textile mills. So it worked. And Yay. someone's like, you know what? What if we did this, but like brought it to everybody, yeah. not just the magazine companies? Mm -hmm. uh, so that was 1902. In 1904, the St. Louis World Fair. Do we not do World Fairs anymore? I don't think so. Like, wait, what is a world f like? What so is that? a world fair used to be it used to be hosted by a different city every year, and um, some in Europe, some in United States. Oh, and they were big expeditions of, um, kind of almost like a um, what's that big event in Austin called South by Southwest? Yeah. So all the newest technology and entertainment and inventions and animals and everything would go to these world fairs. Ooh, interesting. And that's where you get like the St. Louis Arch, you know, the arch? Yeah. The Eiffel Tower was a world fair. Um, there's a bunch of like hot houses in England that were built. I think they're all gone now, but those were part of a world fair. The Parthenon in Nashville, Tennessee, that was part of a world yeah. So there's still stuff like... That's like leftover. Yeah, but I don't think I, I don't, haven't heard yeah. one ever. I've never heard of one. Yeah, so I'm like, that's so, cool though. Anyway, they decide to showcase this air conditioning at the World Fair in 1904, St. Louis, Missouri, and they cooled the Missouri State Building, and the system used 35,000 cubic feet of air per minute to cool the thousand seat auditorium and rotunda and the other rooms in the building. It marked the first time the American public was exposed to the concept of comfort cooling. And so, um, yeah, that was a huge deal. I wonder how that was, like, for the people that, like, were there, like, got to, like, experience it. They're probably like, oh, my God. Oh, still like, wearing 20 layers of clothing. <laughs> I want to point that out. We're still wearing 20 <laughs> layers of clothing at this point. It's like, why, why would we do that? I know. Like, come on. <laughs> um, I'm sure it was amazing. Yeah, sure. right? Like, I'm sure it was, like, mind-blowing. Like Then, in the 1920s, the way to get people to watch the new movies, because movies were coming out, mm -hmm. was to have the theaters be air-conditioned. Oh, so it's like, you want to cool down? Yeah. Go to the movies. And that's something, historically, that would stick. You know, even in the South, in the 60s, people would, that's how you got butts in the seats, because it was There's usually AC. the only air-conditioned building. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this goes, uh, we really... AC or yeah, AC is a very new. The idea of AC yeah. in everywhere is a very new concept. Um, so these early cooling systems in the movie theaters were essentially heating systems modified with refrigeration equipment that distributed cold air through the floor vents, resulting in hot, muggy upper levels and much colder lower levels. And I want to note that it was always the um, black people who had to sit on the upper level, and the white people had to sit on the lower levels. Messed up. Yep. Um, but it was so cold on the lower level, though, patrons sometimes had to wrap their feet in newspapers to keep from getting, like, cold feet. Oh, my gosh. Feet. Yeah. 
1922, the Carrier Engineering Corporation installed the first well-designed cooling system for theaters at the Metropolitan Theater in Los Angeles. So that is the first in this trend. Wow. Uh, and the first one in New York was May of 1922. Uh, so same year we're getting AC in theaters on yeah. all coast. That's crazy. So if you really think about it, AC hasn't been a lot around that long no. like, compared to like other things we've talked about. Well, basic AC though, right? Yeah. The dog run cabin no, or yeah. having the idea of wanting to be cool has been around yeah. for a long time. The idea of artificially cool. Yeah, like in your house. Yes. And yeah. So now they're like, look, people love this. What if we made it even smaller and put it in their homes? Okay. Amazing. So now it's 1921. <laughs> And Frigidaire introduces the new split system, which you're going to talk about. Yes, yes. Room cooler. I'm sorry, 1929. I said 21. It is now 1929. And Frigidaire introduces the new split system room cooler, and that was small enough for home use and cheap like a radio cabinet. I want to point out radios were much bigger back then. Yeah. Like huge. However, it was heavy and expensive, and really, it didn't go much farther than very, very wealthy, like Elon Musk and Bezos. You had to Bezos. be rich to, to yeah. have one. Of course, that's always how it starts. That's always <laughs> how it starts, right? This was like, the remember back in the day when the Teslas, all Teslas were like one hundred to $200,000, yeah. and now they're like a lot more affordable. Yeah, and I can get one for like thirty k. <laughs> yeah, same idea. Like, yeah. This was the original Tesla of H. AC systems. Interesting. Yes. So General Electric, so Frigidaire makes the first home edition, but General Electric is going to simplify it. And they end up simplify it, simplifying it between 1930 and 1931. But that's a pretty bad decade to come out with something new, right? Yeah. 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 That was a pretty bad decade. <laughs> uh, so it's pretty much disregarded, right? We have yeah. bigger issues. Like it wasn't like, I'm sure it was good, but everyone was worried about other stuff. Bigger so. issues that knock on wood are not going to be repeated. Please. Yes. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> um, so it's in the 1930s that they synthesize chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs. Do you know what chlorofluorocarbons are? No. I'll give you a hint. They put the hole in the ozone layer. So it is that is the first um, refrigerant cooling system is the mm -hmm. CFCs. Then we ultimately realize that they put the hole. That's not till the 80s, though. Oh. But it's in the 30s that they come up with the synthesized chlorofluorocarbons, which became the world's first non-flammable refrigerating fluids, um, which made the air conditioner safer. They're not going to spontaneously yeah. combust on you. However, because we we know that um, they're bad for the earth. How do we still have fruit flies in this house? I know. <laughs> like, um, they're so clean. I'm like, I don't understand. We've had it. We have it cleaned all the time. We have bombed it. I know. I've mm -hmm. also been making sure like I've just been throwing everything away. Like even everything. I'm like, why? I, I am convinced they're just like in the walls or something. Yeah, they, mu they must have babies somewhere. <laughs> so... Anyway, CFCs come out in the in the 30s. We realized by the 80s that we're putting a hole in the ozone layer. By the way, CFCs were in everything. They were in our ACs, our refrigerators, in our hairspray. Oh like, my god! It was propelled. Yeah, had a CFC in that it. That is that's horrible. So, and the Montreal Protocol in the 1990s said we had to switch to hydrofluorocarbons, which is AFCs. It's better, um, right? And that, yes. And that was to stop the rolling hole in the ozone layer, which I think is like over Australia, isn't it? Isn't that why Australia has the highest rate of skin cancer? I, might, I don't know if I'm making that up. Yeah. But I feel I like don't know. that is, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah. So in 1932, we got a little sidetracked there with the CFCs mm -hmm. and the HFCs. They release the ACs for the market. But of course, like we said, it's just not expensive. a good time. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a bad time, yeah. Yeah. Um, the end of the 30s, World War II starts. The government starts air conditioning their government buildings. And people are like, wow, this is a game changer. Yeah. Because at that point, people were really only being um, like, exposed to the, the theaters. Yeah, yeah. And even then, that's just if you had a theater in your town, you had the money to go to a theater. Yeah. I mean, the 30s were no joke, right? I mean, it's just not a good time. To live in the United States. Yeah. So World War II happens and a lot more people are exposed to the concept of AC. And they're just like, wow, this is really So nice. more people like were introduced to it. Exactly. So. 
Um, also, after World War II ends, people, you get the rise of the middle class, right? Yes. The baby boomers start being born, which will then ruin everything. <laughs> but at this point, it's a good time to be alive. Yeah, if you survived the Second World War, it is a good time to be alive. Yes. Got to look at the bright side here. <laughs> so in 1947, they kind of... Uh, those companies kind of re-released the AC, like, hey, remember this? Yeah. And at uh, 1947, 43,000 AC systems are sold, which doesn't sound like a lot, but we're getting attraction here. Mm -hmm. By the late 1960s, most new build homes had central air conditioning and or window air conditioning. Most everybody could get a window air conditioning affordably yeah. by 1960. It changed the demographic of Arizona, Florida, and Texas. Because up to that point, nobody really lived in these states. Yeah, because it was very so small. Hot. Yeah. So Arizona, Florida, Texas, people were flocking to them now, which is pretty yeah. cool. Wow. Air conditioning is now in nearly 100 million American homes, representing 87% of all households. That's still pretty low. It should be 100%. Yeah. Um, so obviously, we know that... Um, our traditional methods of getting electricity or power. Oh my God. Oh my God. These right in flies, my face, man. Right in your face. These fruit <laughs> flies. They're so disrespectful. <laughs> um, so we know now that obviously we're kind of like in an environmental oh. end zone here and someone's calling me, sorry. Um, and so they actually knew this pretty quickly. They knew this by the 1970s that there was going to be issue because in the 1970s something called the energy crisis hit and this is mm -hmm. the first we're in an energy crisis now but this was like the first big energy crisis right yeah it was a big deal there was an oil embargo a lot of stuff happened it was just a very tough time uh especially if your name was jimmy carter <laughs> so uh in that uh, we get the first kind of uh hvac related laws that come into effect um they in the 1970s, laws were passed to reduce energy consumption across the board, setting the stage for the Energy Department's Appliance and Equipment Standards Program, which established a single federal energy efficiency standards for air conditioning manufacturers rather than a patchwork of state-by-state -state standards. Okay. So previously, depending on what state you were in, it, they kind of regulated how much power could be used by your AC. At this point, the federal government's like, no, nope, to prevent an energy crisis again, which... Spoiler alert, they didn't because we could lose our power at any moment. We learned that. At any moment, <laughs> we could lose our power. But that was the idea, to regulate. That's why our AC systems are so regulated now, right? Yeah. They have that little thing on them, that sticker on them. Yeah. Uh, since 1992, the Energy Department has issued conservation standard standards for manufacturers of residential AC uh, and heat pumps. The initial standard is expected to net about $29 billion in energy saving, from 1993 to 2023. Another standard was passed in 2006. It's uh, anti anticipated to result in another 70 billion in energy savings from 2006 to 2035 and avoid more than 369 million metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions equivalent to the annual greenhouse gas emissions of about 72 million cars. So government's doing something right here yeah. for once. Um, and that's great. Of course, we also have, as I mentioned, that change from chlorofluorocarbons to uh, hydrofluorocarbons. And also the Freon has changed. In 2010, they changed the Freon. Are you going to talk about that? Um, I don't think so. Okay. No. I will be talking about that okay. later on. So that that is something that happened as well. So that was a lot. I mean, this is a long yeah. subject. Yeah, this it is. is. A, this is a long subject. This is definitely one of those that you can find a bunch of yes. information about. Yes. So I'm going to hand it. Okay. Over yes. to you. Cool. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what is an HVAC system, the different types of HVAC systems, and then I'm going to talk about like some of the like most important parts of your HVAC system. So as we discussed earlier, HVAC stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. It refers to the different systems used for moving air between indoor and outdoor areas, along with heating and cooling, both residential and commercial buildings. Um, of course, these are the systems that keep us warm and cozy in the winter and then, you know, so we don't die of heat <laughs> in the yeah. summer. Um, there are also the systems that filter and clean indoor air to keep you healthy and maintain humidity levels at optimal comfort levels. And we know all about that here in Houston. Yes. <laughs> um, so how does it work? Each component in your house 
in your home may be separate, such as a radiant system combined with window air conditioning units. However, it is more common for combined systems, such as central heating and AC systems, that use a single blower to circulate air via internal ducts in a home or with a ductless system for different rooms or zones in the house. So, yeah, definitely the most popular one that we know about is our nice little central AC system. Yes. So now let's talk about the different types. The first one I'll talk about is the heating and cooling split systems. The most common types of HVAC systems are the heating and cooling split systems. As the name would, uh, would imply, the system is split between two main units, one for heating and one for cooling. These systems are notable because they contain both indoor and outdoor units, which are easily recognizable. These type of HVAC units have a cooling system outside, which uses refrigerant, compressors, and coils to cool air, and a fan to blow out hot air. Uh, these are usually the large AC units placed outside the home, which uh, run during the summer. Those are like the ones we see all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. they have a condenser outside, and then another, and the actual unit is inside. Yeah. Um, the heating and cooling split systems also has a heater, usually located in a basement or other storage space. Obviously, here we do not the have attic. basements. Yeah, the <laughs> attic, uh, which uses uh, gas to heat the house. This is dispersed by either a fan or evaporator to sec to circulate the air. This system uses a traditional thermostat to manage the temperature and is able to keep most houses at your desired temperature. Most units are also packaged with purifiers and humidifiers, so no matter the weather, your house or workplace is kept comfortable. Yeah, it depends on where you are for those. Yeah, yeah. So one thing I want to point out, and I might have just lost it. What did I want to say? Oh, the best place to keep your HVAC system is in the basement. Oh, really? The worst place to keep your HVAC system is in the attic. So we're just unfortunate. Yes, we're just that unfortunate. Sucks. <laughs> and that's because the basement allows you to control the environment the HVAC system's in better. Yeah. Whereas the attic, you it's know, it, it can super hot. It can get hot. And if you're, it's not ventilated correctly, yes. your HVAC system can actually start to rust. Yeah. Even I've been in many attics and it is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah. So... Um, and same with the ductwork. It's healthier for your ductwork to come up through a basement than it yeah. is to come down. So if you've ever been in a northern home, you're going to notice their air registers are on the floor, mm -hmm. not, and ours are all on the floor. Yeah, ceiling. yeah. I've so, seen, I've definitely seen the air registers on the floor before. Yeah. So, um, yay. It's just an Another unfortunate reason thing. Why Texas is the greatest state to live in. We love it here. <laughs> 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 All right. So then the next uh, HVAC system I'm going to talk about is the hybrid split system. A hybrid system, uh, uh, hybrid system types of HVACs are similar to the split systems, but with some key differences. These sy these systems are on the rise due their due to their ability. I can't speak mm -hmm. due to their ability to mitigate energy costs through their electric hybrid heating system, which differentiates them from the other types of HVAC systems. Um, this key difference, usually set by the owner, sets these types of HVAC, HVAC systems apart from the rest. The ability to switch between gas power, which is quicker and more complete, to electric, which is more efficient and quieter, allows homeowners to decide how they want to heat their home. Um, it's useful in more mild climates that are capable of taking advantage of this during months where it isn't too cold and electric heat will do just fine. Um, this system also uses uh, tradi traditional ducts as well as uh, thermostats and provides all the benefits of a split system but you have the option to conserve energy and um everyone likes a cheaper bill yes. so <laughs> i want to point out in houston majority of us are using a split system yeah the, okay yeah. cool. if you're in a single family home some people still have window units which is perfectly fine additions to homes will actually have those like smaller like single units yeah um but yeah most of us i killed it it's thank dead god now. Yes. yeah r.i.p it's gone. <laughs> I killed the fruit fly. Yeah. Um, most single families in Houston are going to have a split system. Yeah. No, yeah. I definitely don't really see, like, window units here for sure. Like, I don't think I've ever. Maybe I have. But. You see them in older parts of town. Yeah. Older. Like, I, I have seen a few of them. Um, but modern homes. Anything definitely built. Not. Most everything built in the 70s is going to be split systems. We love that. <laughs> <laughs> apartments are a different story you still yeah. see some apartments with window units yeah thankfully super i don't sketch. have that <laughs> yeah super thankfully sketch. i do not have that i have a nest uh thermostat <laughs> oh, oh that's right it's you so do. nice do they make you pay extra for that yes they do and then does the energy company are they able to like turn up your cool or so like i can do it like i can put it on eco mode like when i leave the house although i did do that like a week ago and i came home and it was 80 degrees yes, in my apartment <laughs> Yeah, that's when they threatened to turn all the power off. Yeah. They were, like, hijacking people's thermostats. 
Yeah, it was bad. I was like, I'm not using this because it well, took forever to cool down. Yeah, okay? you have your animals. Mm-hmm. So I was like, nice yeah, but you can stuff. also like the nice thing about it is you can set a schedule. So like you can go in on the thermostat and put like at this time, it's going to put it to this temperature and then like at this time, put it to this. So I do that. That's nice. Yeah, I, 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 nice. I, I like adjusted that. So like when I get home, it's like 70 degrees. <laughs> you walk into the like. Yeah. Uh, and then doggies are still comfortable. Mm-hmm, exactly. Exactly. It's definitely convenient. Expensive, but yeah. it's convenient. Well, that's why I won't get a nest because I just don't trust. Like, give me a good old fashioned meal. Yeah. Like, whatever works, works. Yeah. So, yeah. So the next one I'm going to talk about it's, is the duct free system, or it's also called a mini split system. So a duct free or mini split system is a unique system with large upfront costs but big benefits for certain needs and applications. These type of HVAC units are individual units in each room, providing greater independent control. These units are mounted on the uh, on walls and doors and are usually attached to an outdoor compressor. This installation process is expensive and visually obvious. For the yeah. owners. It is not pretty. We just talked about that. Yeah. Some people put those in their additions because it's easier. It's cheaper yeah. than routing Yeah, your... exactly. Oh, so, sorry. yeah. Sorry. No, you're good. Spoiler you're right. alert. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so these units are perfect for new additions to yeah. homes, like garages or like if you added like a building outside, like a little guest house or something, um, because it's easier to install rather than like putting a whole like, We actually have system. one in our garage. Oh, our, really? Can, our garage can be converted into a room. Yeah, because your garage is like, it's separate, right? Yeah, it's separate yeah. From it house. can be converted it was originally used as like a woodworking mm-hmm. and I've noticed a lot of people in my neighborhood have done that. They've converted their garage into a, a little guest actual house. room. Yeah. Or a little guest room. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is definitely convenient for that. Um, these types of HVAC units are also beneficial for service businesses like hotels or venues, allowing tenants to be able to like control the temperature in yeah. their room. Um, another benefit is energy cons- conservation. Since individual rooms that are being used are being heated, it keeps exterior or unused rooms uh, from wasting energy. This is why individuals retiring or downsizing could seek to install these systems, keeping the rooms they use warm and the rooms that they do not use from like wasting energy. Um, these systems uh, require regular and intensive cleaning and maintenance, which is important to keep up with as the cost of total repairs and replacements are expensive. Yes. <laughs> It's important to maintain your HVAC system in general, even the ones. Yeah, even the the ones we have. Yeah, like, yeah. get them checked at least once a year by your HVAC no, technician. No, yeah. In Puerto Rico, you do see a lot of these. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, so like my grandma's apartment, she has the windowed like units. Like there's one in every room and yeah. Do they one. work well, you think? Yeah, they work. They definitely work. But uh, most of the time we just keep the windows open, like try not to waste energy. Like, yeah. Does she have, um, oh no, she lives in an apartment, but. Is everything, like, concrete? All the houses and stuff are, like, concrete in Puerto Rico? Yeah. 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 I remember that when I went, their houses were kind of, I don't want to say ugly, but just, like, very, like, bunkers Mm -hmm, almost. mm -hmm. No, yeah. And then a big problem in Puerto Rico is power outages, so, unfortunately. And (laughs) who's responsible for that? Ahem, 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 ahem. All right, so the last one I'll talk about is package heating and air. So out of all the types of HVAC units, package heating and air is the most like niche one. The system is a contained heating and air unit that is stored within the house. It is usually kept in an attic or top floor storage space and serves to both cool and heat a house. Its compact size makes it useful for smaller spaces or houses and allows it to be placed within the home if an, in- if an exterior uh, is not an option. These types of HVAC systems are also able to be very efficient and easily maintained. They are generally used in warmer climates since the heating system is not as powerful as other options. Um, The heat is generally electrically generated, but other forms can combine gas and electric abilities. Yeah, I've never heard of this one, of packaged Um, packaged heating and air. I don't think they're... Did you talk about um, dry cooling systems Mm -mm. that don't use humidity? No. So in... Las Vegas and dry desert areas, they yeah. have a dry AC system because, what is it's, it called? It's, it's going to bother me. Hold on. Keep going. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. No, yeah. Um, Colorado, when I went over there, it's so dry over there. Yeah, it's super dry. It's so pretty, but I can never live there because it's so dry. Um, they call it, hold on. No, it's. I know it's split air, but there's like a very specific type of. Like it's not coming to my mind. To my mind. Oh, what is it called? 
oh my god i'm gonna lose my mind here <laughs> i know it's called something different yeah um ac system let me try one more no you're good yeah you're good in dry environments because they use them in vegas too yeah I don't know. I'm going to have to ask Chris. Yeah. Because, oh, it's evaporative. That's oh, what evaporative? it's called. Evaporative? Evaporative okay. cooling is the type. It's Ooh, different than how our AC systems work here. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. I knew I wasn't crazy. I knew they had separate. <laughs> okay. They have something different. So, did you have anything else? Um. I was also going to talk about the, like, parts, but I don't know if you were going to talk about that or if you I was going to talk about the parts that are shared in the whole system. Okay. So, like... Um, your AC and your furnace have parts separately, yeah. but are, we need to remember that the HVAC system is a system, so okay. they actually share parts too. Yeah. Um, so let me look. We're going to, I was going to talk about, we can talk about that. Okay. I was going to talk about that. Let me see. Sorry. No, we're Brief good. break. I was going to yeah. talk about the blower I can motor. edit this out too, so we'll be fine. Blower motor, heat exchanger. Um, evaporator coil. Okay, I'll let you talk about it then. Uh, all I feel of like, it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, you will probably have some more valuable information than me. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> so, okay. I want to talk about items that your HVAC system shares. Yeah. Um, and like we just said, you do have separate components mm -hmm. specifically for AC and specifically for heating. But yeah, because they're not what, like together. Yeah, yeah. but they are it's if you go up into your attic or your basement it's yeah. going to be the same bulky unit for yeah. a split system oh okay. we're talking about split system so the split system will still have like like the same like they're both yes all the parts are in one spot yes right? and okay. then with the split system the reason it's called split system is because you have the condenser outside so the oh, condenser is split okay. off and sometimes you have heat pumps. We really don't have heat pumps in Houston, but yeah. some places also have heat pumps. Is that like probably for like colder yes, places? Yes, it's okay. for colder places. They actually have some heat pumps up in Dallas. So like Amarillo, colder parts of Texas. Yeah, because it does are, get colder over it does. there for sure. In fact, the panhandle, like it legitimately snows Yeah, up it does snow. It's cold, yeah. cold. It's, it's crazy the weather we have here. Yeah, Texas is so big. <laughs> it's it's crazy. big. Yeah. Yeah, and if you go down south, oh, we think it's hot here. Like it gets hotter. Yeah. Yeah, Miami is actually really hot. I'm like, surprised. Where my mom lives, it gets to 110 sometimes, or or hotter, like, in the summer. Isn't it drier in Laredo, yeah, though? Yeah, it's also drier. It's not as humid as over here, for Do sure. Do you think it's more tolerable? <sighs> Honestly, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, anytime I would go down there and visit in the summer, I'm dying. Like, I'd rather be over here, like... <laughs> Sweating. Yeah, like, it's just too hot. Yeah. But. Texas is just too hot. Well, this lower part of that yeah just for sure um okay so blower motor and remember these are items that are shared yes so the blower motor sends the heated air into the air ducts and into the home and most blower motors are built to last 20 years Ooh. and it can also be used to push air conditioned air into the home so this is like air that it's gonna this is what's blowing air through your system okay that's why it's called a blower motor yes it's sucking air from the outside and then blowing air into your system Bloop. The heat exchanger is used to transfer heat from one part of the HVAC system to another. It's used in the heating and cooling process, and it looks like curved metal tool to tubes. Okay. Tubes. You might have had more information than that, but what do you think? I don't know. Let me look. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much that. It just absorbs heat and warms cool air when your thermostat when activates your furnace. Yeah. Okay. Yeah pretty much that yeah. the the evaporative coils sit uh on or in the furnace area and it absorbs heat in the air and it can be used to heat or cool the house okay so it's, so it's for gonna, both yeah. yeah make the air hot or suck the hot air out oh. to make the air cool very important very important component there's so much like i know there's actually a lot that yes. i just decided not to talk about for no because i feel like it's excessive like yeah. it is like and, and honestly to become an hvac technician takes years of work mm -hmm. it's a legit yeah, science like, it's not easy like <laughs> did you ever watch community yes I how love, troy I, barnes is like 
an HVAC prodigy. Yeah, I love that joke. I love the episode where they like lock him in that death room and you have to fix the AC and if you don't oh, fix the AC yeah. you die. <laughs> that show is so funny. I also love like all the paintball episodes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um another good one is when they build the fort, like the oh, pillow yeah. fort. The pillow fight. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's so good. That's a good show. No, yeah, it's an it, amazing show. Um anyway. And then other the probably the most important thing for you and me that our system shares is the thermostat the thermostat controls both the heating and cooling in your house and when you turn your thermostat on to heat and you set a temperature that sends a message to the blower motor to start running okay. and the blower motor is going to be pushing hot air until the temperature the thermostat reads that the temperature has come to your preferred temperature mm -hmm. so in this in the winter i might set the house to 65 say it's 60, the blower motor kicks on and it will continue to push hot air through the house until the house reaches 65 and then it's going to turn off. Oh, okay. But the moment it feels that maybe it's decreasing, it's going back to 64, it's going to kick on. It'll turn back on. Okay. Same with the AC. I set my house to 70, but the house is 75. So the blower motor is going to kick on and continue pushing. Is that what we air. hear sometimes? Yes. Like, the the AC. Yeah, because like, yeah. I always hear that all the time, like all of a sudden. Like, if I change the AC, it'll go, woo, and yes. then I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's also the reason, it's the thing, you know when you turn your heater on, you get that, like, stale smell? Yeah, sometimes. yeah. Or it's sometimes that, it smells a little burnt. <laughs> yeah, it's pushing that hot air, and that hot air gives off kind of a burn smell, especially oh, when you first turn on your... it's like, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes sense, because, yeah, sometimes I turn on my heater, on, or at least in my old apartment, like, it smells. Yeah, <laughs> a little stinky. The thermostat is, like, the brain, basically, for yeah. your... So, yeah, it is definitely one system. of the most important. Doesn't that also help? Like, you'll know if something's wrong with your AC if, like, you set your thermostat and it's not doing anything. <laughs> that is not a good feeling. I just want to point out. Oh, yeah. That is not. Um, so, let's talk about the AC specifically real quick. I want to talk more about that chemical refrigerant. Yeah. These the bad one. Yes. The chlorofluorocarbons, the hydrofluorocarbons. Yeah. So remember, we switched to hydrofluorocarbons, mm -hmm. and a refrigerant is basically a chemical blend that changes from liquid to gas in the compressor as it absorbs the heat. So uh, originally, we were using, well, not originally, after the CFCs, we moved to Freon, or R22. Yes. In January 2020, uh, which was uh, the last month we were all innocent. That was say. literally right before. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, R22 was discontinued. Uh, but, however, they knew it was coming. It's not like it was a surprise. Yeah, like it was planned. So, as I mentioned earlier, in 2010, that's when they actually started doing the switch mm -hmm. from R22 to what we now call Puron, which is R410A. So, if you have an HVAC system installed after 2010, you're already running on the new um, Puron. Yeah. I think I'm saying it right. Puron. If you have it before 2010, you're probably running on Freon and they will continue to refill your AC system. But once the Freon runs out, it runs out. So what happens after that? You'll have to replace your system. And also it's really, Freon is so expensive now No. because they're running out of it. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. horrible. Yeah. Well, you had a warning to be well, fair. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. As I mean, long they as they were like warned. 12 years ago now, right? Yeah. I feel like, but like, I feel like a lot of people are probably warned and like, I don't know what that means. Like, <laughs> I bet people, I bet there are a lot in the last five years, people who are shocked who have been like, like wait, what? Serious? I got to change my whole system. Like, yeah. That's horrible. Time to and, sell. Yep. Time to sell my house. <laughs> So, yeah, that is the update on. Wow. And it's still crazy. run on hydrofluorocarbons. So, hypothetically, we are not destroying the good uh, the environment. Yeah. But remember, it's now about energy capacity, right? And one of the ways we're fixing the energy capacity is running our energy off of renewables. Mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, I use, I use wind. renewable energy. Me so. too. I use Octopus. What company do you use? Um, I'm actually I'm using this company called Bulb. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's not, they don't do contracts. So, like, oh, that's but nice. But they're like, they're at like the same price as like, or some cheaper than yeah. a lot of places. So I'm like cost of energy, right? Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know what you're talking, what we're talking about in Texas, you have to buy your energy by the kilowatt hour, which is yes. the biggest crock of shit ever invented. And you have to like do contracts or it's if you, bullshit. Yeah. It was supposed to save us money, but it doesn't. It does not. It doesn't. No. And sometimes if you're super lucky, your company will just go out of business and not tell you. Yeah. Or you'll forget about that your contract ends and they'll start charging you like a million times more than you were paying. Yep. <laughs> so right now we're having like an energy crisis. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and wow. so <laughs> it's up to like 20 cents per kilowatt hour. So I, so I switched to Octopus because I was able to get 14 cents. Yeah, mine is like around, it's like 13.7. Yeah. Something like that. I want to point out when I moved here in 2013, it was nine cents. So, yeah. I mean, it has definitely. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, the best and most eco friendly thing or way to run your AC system now is running it on renewables. So, like, mine is solar. Yeah. I believe. Uh, wind. I think mine is wind. I don't know what mine is. I need to check. But I know it is renewable. Yeah. So, bleh. <laughs> uh, you know what we haven't really talked about, though, is the ventilation. Oh, yeah. That's true. We always leave the V part of HVAC kind of like in the dust. Because it's like. The other ones are a little bit more important. You know? It's not as glamorous yeah. as heating or cooling. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about the five components. Uh, the air inlet, the air filter, the fan, the ducts, and the air registers. Maybe. The ducts. There we go. So your air inlet is an open vent that usually sits on the outside of the home, and it is what your blower motor is sucking the air in to run your system. Okay. So we need to have some sort of fresh air intake outside of the home to allow the HVAC system to get the air. To do its job, yeah. yeah. They're not just making air out of nothing. Yeah, they're grabbing it from they're outside. sucking it okay. out, yeah. Uh, newer homes will have multiple air intakes, while older homes may have only one. You mm-hmm. definitely want multiple. You yeah. definitely want multiples. You're just asking for birds or squirrels to, like, mess it up, right? Yeah, okay, because if there's only one, if that one messes up, it's you're, you're done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the air filter, as your air flows through your HVAC system, it needs to be filtered because we have dogs. We shed our skin, which is gross, but we do it. It's true. And the air filter removes dust, particle contaminates, pet dander, et cetera, from the air circulation of your home. Uh, some of them also remove COVID-19, you know, like they have it on airplanes. It keeps healthy. <laughs> yes. Um, you really want to make sure you change your filter quarterly or more if you have big shedding dogs. Yes, because it will get very dirty and ugly. <laughs> and you will get, you'll feel like you're yeah, sick. Yeah, you'll get sick. You'll like, get sick. Yeah, you'll get sick. Um, it also protects, oh my God. Another one. There's another one. <laughs> um, maybe they're all coming from this room. We're talking about know. fruit flies, by yeah, the way. Yeah, the fruit flies. Um, <laughs> It also protects the AC, AC system from any large particles that could damage it. So if you have a dirty air filter, not only are you impacting your health, you're impacting the health of your HVAC system. Mm. So you, you need, could you just, cause problems. Exactly. It makes it work harder. It stresses yeah. it out. Um, Sim HVAC units, if you're lucky, only have one air filter that's on the actual like HVAC unit. Yeah. If you're unlucky, you have multiple air filters on each air register, which I have in my house. Sucks. oh my god yeah that's we have to buy different sizes and like in different <gasps> parts of the house yeah that sounds really like crappy. a pain it's so annoying jesus because then when you got to change them uh, every few months you got to do like the whole house yes you do Oof. and hvac filters are have different ratings yeah. it's called a merv rating uh-huh. merv. i don't know what merv stands for um i should google that But it can go from 1 to 16, 1 being the most basic type of uh, filtration, which is just fiberglass and aluminum, Mm -hmm. to 16, which is bacteria, smoke, and viruses. So it's like fancy. Yeah. So it's like what they have in airplanes or like hospitals tend to have very high level. They call them, isn't that called like a HEPA filter or something? Yeah, something like that. Uh, Your fan. Your fan is controlled through the thermostat. Oh, we just, we already talked about that. Through the um, thermostat. Yes, it's related to your blower motor. Um, the big thing to know is should you always keep your fan on on or should you leave it on auto? My opinion is you should leave your fan on auto so it's yeah. only running when you're running hot or cold air. Mm-hmm. That's what I always have mine on, Yes, on auto. If you leave it on on, your wrist, especially in Houston, it's, wow, it's flying around me. It's flying around me. Oh, my God. I think he's gone. Okay. I don't see him anymore. He, this <laughs> nope it's right here oh my god if you're watching the video you get to this <laughs> witness this we are being attacked right now by fruit flies like after swatting. this house was bombed this is like a third world yeah, country it's like the stragglers are still like around so uh, so where was i the fan yes uh, you want to leave it on auto because if you leave it on all on all the time, you run the risk of getting too much humidity sucked into your house. Okay. That will that happen. also like make your HVAC work harder? It will. Okay. Yeah. Because it's it always will. on. Like. Yeah. It it can. And finally, our not finally our duct work. The duct work it was what distributes airflow from the home's heating or cooling the system. Big, the big tubes. Yes. 
and they have two components. It's like a circulatory system, like your heart. Blood gets pumped in and then pumped out. Oh, okay. And with the heart being in the middle, mm -hmm. same with the HVAC system. Air gets pumped out through one side and then pumped in back into the HVAC system. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, duck work is in the attic if we don't have a basement. If you have a basement, it's in your basement. Lucky you if you have a basement. I know. <laughs> duck work, uh, residential duck work is usually flexible, although you can have the harder metal duck work. Mm -hmm. But most of it's flexible. And if it is flexible, it needs to be suspended. You don't want to. Yeah, it usually other. you can like move it, right? Like, yes. Is, are, is the hard one like, do they use those more like in like commercial? They buildings? can. Yeah. But I've seen, I've you seen know, them you in see houses. people in the air vents. And yeah. The <laughs> yeah. That's not a thing. <laughs> like Stranger Things. Yeah. <laughs> or die hard yeah when they're like crawling through gross there, you like... know how gross those things would be they'd be full of rats and like a like, building realistically because they don't like when in the shows they don't look that bad no like... it'd be dusty and in houston it'd be full of roaches oh that's horrible that's scary <laughs> um but that flexible duct work which is like the aluminum color yeah yeah uh needs to be suspended because if they touch each other they'll actually condensate and cause each other to rot oh so, yeah wow. so it, ha it can't be like touching like anything or uh yeah it needs to be suspended it's so usually it has to like be black a little bit yeah the little ropes little ropes, ropes. Okay. little black yeah i think i've seen them before so did you notice did you know there's a difference between air registers and air vents no okay an air register adjusts the airflow by opening and closing mm -hmm. oh the, they have like the little handle yes, that like, you can like like that one like that one like the one yeah. in here that is an air vent. Okay, okay. And we know it's an air vent because it doesn't close. It can't yeah. be closed. And so that's the air register. That's probably where the air is coming in. And then the air vent yeah. in here is where it's getting sucked out. The air registers are always all dusty. Yeah. <laughs> air registers always have the little... Yeah, the little like handle. You can like close them and open them. Yes. Okay. Easy. Yeah, easy difference. Easy concept. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you already talked about other types of AC systems. Let's talk about some AC specifics for Houston, because one thing you're probably wondering, especially because you lived in an apartment, is do landlords, are they required to give you AC? Yeah. And you know the answer to that? Is it, is it no? No, yes. It's yes. No, it's yes. It, no, I was about it's to be yes. shocked. Yes, of, okay, yes it's yes. They better. <laughs> in the city of Houston, it's actually considered, oh my God, it's, it's back. It's like in front of my eyeball. Um, I'm like getting ready <laughs> We, we will get you Fly. your friend we should have left this friend here right <laughs> um okay in the city of houston it is considered a health and human services good. requirement good and that's because people die yeah every year like, people die um city ordinance requires every home to have an hvac system um so every house has to have has, has to has have to have it and if you're a landlord, you have to provide some sort of HVAC system. Even if it's just a window unit, you still have to provide it and you still have to maintain it. It Good. has to be working. If you have an AC installed in city limits, that's in the city of Houston, mm -hmm. the city requires you to have a city inspection of the unit. And the general rule that they require in Houston uh, is for every 600 square feet, you need one ton of AC. So that's why you probably heard in our meetings, we talk about tonnage, AC yeah. tonnage. Uh, so for every 600 square feet, you need to have one ton of AC. Okay. And that tonnage of AC will be identified on the sticker on the It condenser. says it on the side. Yeah. 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 So in Texas, we do inspect HVAC systems as home inspectors. Mm -hmm. um, that's section three of the TREC inspection report. But as I always say in every um, podcast, check your city. Yeah, it and, could be different. And state so are there are ones. there cities where like it's not required to have an HVAC? Yeah, system? you know I think there is. Um, although now that things are getting warmer in general, that might change. I hope so, because that's that's horrible. Like, um, let me check. I know there's some years European cities that for a long time didn't requ require. We all HVAC. deserve air conditioning, <laughs> like in fr in France and Paris yeah. and stuff. Um, okay. that don't require HVAC. Oh, that don't require AC. I confused it. Oh yeah, AC. Okay, let's see. Where can I live? I'm not seeing. Okay. This is from 2021. Yeah. Let's 
So parts of Idaho, um, parts of Canada, which makes sense. Portland, yeah. Oregon. I was going to say Portland. Uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh, Montana. And these aren't places, it looks like everyone requires them, but these are places that you don't typically need them. Yeah. Although it does make a note that people are now buying them because summers are getting so hot. Yeah. So it looks like it is required in most cities. In most Good. of the United States, but you just didn't, you didn't used to have it. You yeah. didn't used to need it. No, um, yeah. So, yeah. Not ready That's for the sad. summer. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's sad. So... All righty. On that note, is it time for credits? It's it's time for credits. Our music credit is Kevin McLeod of In Contact. Our source credits are the Department of Energy, the Donnelly HVAC Company, and Hughes Environmental. Check us out on YouTube at A Action Home Inspection Group Houston, on Facebook and Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas, and on TikTok at Houston Home Inspector. And how many do we have on YouTube now? Like over eight thousand? Yep, we're getting close to nine thousand. Big deal. Ten thousand is the next goal. Yeah, it's a big so. deal. Um, our next topic is gas lines and gas appliances, which I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, that should be interesting. It is for sure. It is. We've talked a little. Well, we talked about a uh, carbon monoxide. So yeah, it gets yeah. it gets worse. Oof, it's worse. Oof. <laughs> um, until then, I'm Mary. And I'm Isi. And we're the homegirls. And we'll chat with you next time about gas lines. Yep. Yay. Yay. And thank you for joining us on live. We'll see you next month.